Hello friends, I'm Mary and you're watching Rocky Mountain Gardens. Today I'm going to do a special book talk for you and these are going to be books for children, but you may enjoy them as well. I am not here to talk about politics today. I am just here to share with you a wonderful selection of children's books that you can read to or uh, read with your grandchildren, your own children, neighborhood children. And these books all are written either by uh, African American authors and illustrators or by um, uh, one in particular is uh, an American white woman who writes sort of multicultural, multi-ethnic books oftentimes in her many uh, books that she's published. She's fantastic and we'll meet her a little bit later. But the topic for these books are is excellently written, excellently illustrated, and talk about normal everyday Amer African American families or um, you know race relations but all done on the uh, level of children and uh, some of them can be a jumping off point for you and might cause or bring about some educated discussion for your children you know, if your children are like my grandchildren, you know, they're very unaware of racial strife and race relations. They just play with children and they don't even notice anything about skin color or, you know, ethnic background, nothing. They're just other children to play with. And I find, you know, as a children's uh, a teacher and educator, that small children are, you know, unless they're taught differently, don't ever even notice color of skin. And I, I mean, I've noticed that for years working in education. So we want them to just continue seeing that, seeing life that way, that black Americans, Hispanics, everybody, we're all Americans. And that's what I sort of want to promote with this choice of books today. So let's just get started, jump into the titles, and I really hope you find this a helpful tool for your children in this time. Mr. Bookworm and I have a wealth of books to share with you today, and let's get started. On my lap here, I have books by one of my all-time favorite illustrators, and his name is Jerry Pinkney. Now, um, he has illustrated so many books and they are so delightful and informative as well. So I'm just going to share a few with you today. And um, one that I wanted to start with is called Going, oops, sorry about the glare. Going somewhere, sorry, Going Someplace Special. Patricia McKissack was a very prolific black author who wrote both picture books and novels. She was a wonderful author and sadly she has passed away, but this is her story of growing up, what it was like to grow up in the segregated South. She grew up in Nashville and she died in Missouri a few years ago. And I've always enjoyed her books, but so this is a very, um, it's a gently told story about segregation, but yet brings home, you know, what it was like to grow up in those days in the South. So informative, but gently written for children. And it will illuminate that situation to your children when you read it to them and, you know, can lead to discussions with them. Now, as a sort of a enjoyable getaway story, this is another Jerry Pinkney illustrated book, and it's called John Henry. And the author is Julius Lester, another uh, very uh, active 
black author. And oh my gosh, I have to tell you, whether you have black children or white children or any other race, um, this is uh, one of the most well-known American folk tales, or sometimes it's called a tall tale. And it is really a fantastic story. And we have a black man, a very strong black man, as the main character and the hero of the story. And your kids will just be thrilled with this tale. Now, this next book, illustrated by Jerry Pinckney, is written by Valerie Flournoy. And it is called The Patchwork Quilt. The Patchwork Quilt is a glorious story of family life and family love with a grandma creating a patchwork quilt that um, preserves the memories of everyone in her family by using, you know, pieces from their clothing and so on. It's a lovely tale and it just gives you that warm, heartwarming feeling when you read it. Very inspirational. Now, my next book, because uh, what I wanted to tell you about with the Pinckneys is that they are an entire family of authors and illustrators, both Jerry's wife and uh, his son, Brian, is an author and illustrator as well. And then Brian's wife also works in book publishing and has published some books herself. So we have Gloria Jean Pinckney. Um, oh gosh, I, I forgot. I'll, I'll look up and I'll put it up here on the screen. I was so fortunate a few years ago when Brian won the Caldecott Honor, Honor Medal and he won that medal for this book. I'm going to show you a, a picture of his book called The Faithful Friend. And he was the keynote speaker at a librarian's uh, conference that I attended. And so I got to see him. And he was such a cute young man and a uh, wonderful speaker. And of course, I was thrilled because I've been following their work, the whole Pinckney family for years. And so I was so thrilled to be able to uh, hear him speak. But um, The Faithful Friend he is a, let's see, I think it's a West Indian folk tale that he took and created a book from with his illustrations. And he has a very different style than his father. Um, I wish I could show you the book, but I couldn't get a copy of it to share with you today. But let me just show you Jerry's illustrations. They are very um, uh, identifiable, I guess I should say. He has a very unique style, and I believe he uses watercolors for his illustrations. Anyway, I just love him, and you will love all of his books as well. And speaking of families, I have another family group, a uh, father and son, who are illustrators and uh, book authors to share with you if you have not heard of them. This book is Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters, and it was written and illustrated by John Steptoe. And this book is based on an African folk tale in you guys have to see his illustrations. John Steptoe is an amazing artist. Look at that. So this is a lovely sort of African fairy tale. Um, and it's a delightful story. Your children will all love it. I have read really all of these books. I have read to groups of children and they are enthralled when you're reading them to them. And, you know, so... I can recommend them without reservation. Now, uh, John's son is a grown man now, and he is also an artist. His name is Javaka Steptoe, and he wrote a biography of a very famous black artist. His, I'm going to make sure I try to say his name right. Jean-Michel Bas, let's see, Basquiat. I'll show you. His book is called The Radiant Child, Jean-Michel Basquiat, 
And uh, Jean-Michel was born in Haiti, you know, and I guess immigrated to the U.S. and became a very renowned artist in New York. And so this is his biography, and Javaka's um, biography actually won the Caldecott Medal. And if you don't know about the Caldecott Medal, it is the uh, awarded to the best il the illustrator of the. How do I say this? <laughs> he, it is awarded to the best illustrated book of the year. So there's a gold medal that you can see right here on this book that shows that he won the Caldecott. And the illustrator wins the award, not the author. And oftentimes we have collaborations between authors and illustrators to create a book, but it is the illustrator who wins the award. And so Javaka Stepto won the Caldecott. And actually his father has won Caldecott medals as well. Look them up, they are fantastic. Now this next book called Chicken Sunday is written by Patricia Polacco. And Patricia is a, a very prolific author as well and illustrator. And she has her own very unique illustrating style that's very recognizable. But I am including this one by Patricia and another one because uh, Patricia is white, but she grew up in a family where her father was Italian and her mother was Jewish. So she had a very multi-ethnic sort of upbringing and spent a lot of time in Oakland when she was growing up, uh, I believe with one of her parents. I can't remember which because they did get divorced. But in any case, Patricia writes such beautiful and um, loving, heartwarming stories about relationships with people. And as you can see here, this story is about her good friends, these two little boys that she grew up with in Oakland. And she also, um, their grandma was uh, sort of their acted like a mama to them all, you know, and always cooked for them, especially on chicken Sundays. And she was just a delightful woman. And this is such a story that I remember when I would read it to children every year, the, um, I would, at the end of the story, I'd have to tell the, my students, get ready guys, because I'm going to start crying now because it does have a very poignant ending. And Patricia is, I think I still have, yeah, here's a picture I'll try to show it to you without a glare. Here's a picture of Patricia and her friends when uh, they've been all grown up and they're still friends and still get together. And it's just a lovely tale. And let me introduce you to another one of her books. I'm gonna show a picture of the cover here for you because I couldn't get a copy of it to share with you. Um, but she wrote this book about the Civil War. It is called Pink and Say. And it's about two soldiers fighting on the side of the North. And uh, this, and they're both really young boys. And the soldier that is, uh, the white soldier is rescued by the black soldier. And it's just a very, um, it's a significant story that really illustrates the evil of slavery and how awful it was. And, and the absolute tragedy of slavery in our country. My next author and illustrators are Leo and Diane Dillon. And oh my goodness, you all, their illustrations are so beautiful. And they have illustrated many, many um, children's books, collections. They started illustrating science fiction, believe it or not. They are a married couple and they were married until Leo died, I believe in 2012. And they worked together on all of their artwork. They were a team. They created their illustrations together, but when you look at them, you'd never believe it was uh, two people who created these illustrations. It, they're just amazing. And um, 
Let me just show you a sample. This is a book called The Secret River, and it was written by Marjorie Kinnon Rawlings. You might remember her. She wrote the book The Yearling, and Leo and Diane took her book, The Secret River, which was her only book that she actually wrote for children, and illustrated it. And it's fantastic. Let me just give you a, a look at their style of illustration. Isn't it gorgeous? Every one of their books I love. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I, you know, they've written multitudes of books and I, I would love to share them all with you. But like with these other authors and illustrators that I'm telling you about, uh, you can always go to your public library or go onto the web and look up their names and you'll find lists of, of all of their uh, published works. And, um, you know, find more to check out from your library or to order from uh, Amazon if you wish your own copy or to give it as a gift to a child. Now, this book, sadly, didn't have its cover, its uh, paper jacket anymore on it. But this book is a collection of uh, American Black folk tales. And it's told by another one of my favorite authors, Virginia Hamilton. And it's called The People Could Fly. And there you can see, I'm trying to peek to make sure <laughs> you can actually see the inside here. The illustrations are only in black and white, but um, these are fantastic stories to share with your children for a bedtime story. So you might want to think about either purchasing this or, you know, like I said, check it out from the library and read these stories to your children. Um, this is one of the last ones, books that they did together. It's called Love and the Rocking Chair. And this book was illustrated by both Leo and Diane. However, it tells the story of when Leo passed away. And oh my goodness, it's a tearjerker and just a lovely story. And Leo and Diane were an interracial couple. I believe they got married in 1952. But here they are looking for a rocking chair for their son before he was born and she was pregnant. And this is the story the, of what how the rocking chair uh, played a part in their lives and with their son when he grew up. It's a really lovely story and, of course, sad because Leo passes away in the story. But you will really enjoy it. These heartwarming stories are something to uh, bring to life. Um, people of different races living together in peace and harmony. And so, you know, these are great books to share with your children. This next book is actually a novel. In fact, I'm going to introduce you to two famous novels written by Black authors. Uh, the first one, I'm going to show you just a photo here of the book cover since I could not get a copy from my library in time for this video. But it is called, as you can see, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. And it was written by Mildred D. Taylor. And she won the Newbery Award in 1977 for this book. Now, the Newbery Award, in case you're not familiar uh, with it, is the award given to the best children's novel, not picture book, but novel in a given year, you know, the year it was published. And it's a very prestigious award. And Mildred D. Taylor won this award for this children's classic. Um, it takes place during the Depression in Mississippi and has a very, um, a real story, but it's told in a beautiful way of what it was like to grow up in Mississippi in those years during the Depression when everybody was poor, but how um, 
these, this family try to maintain their integrity and um, pride as they were facing social injustice during that time. So um, it's a very encouraging story. It will bring um, that uh, time period and that story of uh, what, the, what black families went through to my white friends and their children as well. So I think it, it's, a, it's a story that educates you and it also has some very, very funny parts. I literally was laughing out loud during parts of it, and, but it also has a poignant side. So um, it will make you laugh and it will make you cry, <laughs> as many books do. And that's, to me, the mark of a well-written story. So check out that book for your children. And, and because it's a novel, you want your upper grade uh, elementary students maybe to read it. Uh, I'd say fifth grade up through middle school, fantastic story if they have not been introduced to it at school. Um, my next book is one of my all-time all favorites. It's called The Watsons Go to Birmingham, 1963. And it is written by uh, incredible author, Christopher Paul Curtis. He's a um, multiple winner of the Newbery Award or Newbery Honor Books. And this was a Newbery Honor book the year it was published. I think it was in 1966, maybe. But this is a story of this family who live in Flint, Michigan, and they drive down south to visit grandma. Uh, I think, was it Alabama? Um, oh, in Birmingham, obviously, Alabama. And, uh, you know, they are there. I don't, uh, those of you who are older like me might remember when there was the bombing of the church in Birmingham that killed a lot of children. And it was a black church. And so, of course, it's quite sad when you're reading about that part of the story, which happens more toward the end. But this family is very quirky. And oh my goodness, there are some parts where. I just laugh so much. I remember reading it years ago when my daughter was little and I was sitting in the bathtub reading. I don't know if you guys like to read in the bathtub, <laughs> but I do. And um, I was reading it and I just started laughing kind of like a hyena. And my daughter came running in, mom, what's going on? And I said, cause she was pretty little, maybe like five years old. I said, oh, I'm just reading a funny story. And it was just delightful. Uh, a delightful story that you will enjoy. It's eye-opening. It's uh, full of fun and laughter. But again, like Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, it is also very poignant. And I hope, guys, that there's a book in this selection or this collection that... Um, piques your interest and, you know, that you are encouraged to go ahead and buy one of these books or definitely get them from the library. And as always, when I do a book talk, I am going to list all of these titles, the authors and the illustrators for you so that you can find them. And don't forget, like I said earlier, that um, all of these authors and illustrators have written more than one book, and since I am recommending them to you, I can guarantee that all of them are fantastic. So if you find books written or illustrated by these um, talented people, you uh, can choose any of their many uh, published works to uh, enjoy with your children. It could be your children or your grandchildren. And you know, books make a great gift as well. So, but if you're uh, on a budget, use that public library. That's why it's there for us all to share. So um, thank you so much for stopping by my channel, guys. And if you enjoyed this video, you might wanna think about subscribing. And I am here on YouTube mainly to try to pro provide a, a kind, gentle place for you to come and uh, escape from some of the troubles we have in our world today. 
already, guys. So I'll see you in the next video. So long. Thank you.